Good morning, YouTube. Today we're going to cover my process for DSLR scanning of negatives. We're going to be scanning the negatives that we captured in last week's video, which I'll go ahead and link right here. So these are medium format 6x6 six six negatives. The first thing that we're going to do is actually pull up those negatives on the computer so that you can see the results of our scanning process. And then we'll go ahead and break down the process for preparing negatives and then going through the process of getting them scanned. We got a lot to cover today. Let's get started. This is one of our sets of negatives that we captured today, and this ended up being 15 images stitched together in a pano. And I'm not going to cover the post-processing today, we'll get into that next week, but just to give you an idea, I'm going to do a very quick and rough inversion. And although these colors look awful, it'll still give you a good idea of the level of resolution we get. So. This is on a 34 inch monitor, so the cross section you're looking at here is about 30 inches, which would be a massive print. And I have applied zero sharpening. After sharpening, it would look even better. But you can see we have these individual fibers, all of the pollen that has landed here. And what I really want to show you is just how thin this depth of field is. You can see the tips are completely out of focus, and then the florets themselves are tack sharp. And you can see the individual fibers on each flower. And again, all the pollen that's landed on these. And it is just a ton of detail that we've captured here on this negative. Next week, I'll go into showing you how we'll process this to get the colors looking the way they should. But for now, let's go ahead and see how we captured this negative. All right, well, hopefully if you're still with us because you're absolutely blown away by those results and you want to see how we capture them. I'm gonna break this down into multiple parts. The first part is going to be preparing the negatives for scanning. And we're gonna be doing a wet mount process. This is similar to what you might be doing if you're doing flatbed scanning. I've tweaked it a little bit to match the DSLR scanning process that we'll be doing. After we get those negatives prepared, I'll go ahead and walk you through my scanning station, how it all works, how I built it, and then we'll go ahead and scan the negatives. Let's go ahead and start with the wet mount process for the negatives. For the first step in wet mounting our negatives, you want to clean your glass using an anti-static glass cleaner and a lint-free cloth. Now, in this case, I'm gonna be using anti-Newton glass. I've also used museum glass in the past and have not had any issues with uh, Newton rings, but because I have the anti-Newton glass, that's what I'll be using. If you are using anti-Newton glass, keep in mind that it needs to be flipped. So when it's in your enlarger, anti-reflective surface would be facing down towards the easel, uh, sandwiched on top of the film. But in this case, because we're gonna be shooting from above, the anti-Newton surface is actually gonna face up and your film will rest on top and then we'll be sandwiching it in between a piece of um, optical grade plastic. So you wanna clean both sides of your glass and then you'll set it aside. And then we're gonna decide which negatives we wanna put on the glass. Now, in order to reduce our workup time, I'm gonna select four negatives that will all fit on the surface of the glass and then we will cut them and place them into position and then we'll have them all wet mounted on the same piece of glass. And this is gonna be far more efficient than trying to do one wet mount at a time. And also the materials that we'll be using are quite expensive for what they are. So the less materials I have to use, the better. In terms of materials, I use Aztec's uh, system here. So I'll be using the Aztec scanner fluid, the optical wipes, and then the scanning overlay sheets. Now, all of this from Aztec comes as a set, and again, it is quite expensive, but it does last a very long time, especially if you're careful with the way you use it. So I would definitely recommend the system as it's easy to use and gives great results, but let's go ahead and see how it works. I have my piece of anti-Newton glass here. This is a five by seven sheet of glass that I use for my enlarger, and I want the anti-Newton surface to be facing the film, which is the opposite direction of how you would have it in the enlarger. Now what I'm going to do is clean off the surface of my negative. So to do that, I like to take a beaker and I take some of the Aztec scanning mounting fluid that we're going to be using to mount the negatives. I put that in one of these small containers and then I just spread it across the surface to have any dust fall into the beaker so that it's not caught in our mounting surface. Now you're going to end up with dust on your negatives, you just have to accept it. But the most that, the more that we can remove, the better, and means less work in post later. And then I just drop the negative onto the surface and I'll move on to the next. Okay, and now I'm going to take a little bit more of the fluid and I'm going to place it on top and then lay over our clear plastic. First, I wanna cut the plastic to size to make sure it's gonna be smaller than our piece of glass. Uh, 
I'll lay that just in front of our negatives and then I'm going to apply a little bit more fluid to the top. We don't need to go crazy there. So I'm going to apply a finger on our leading edge and then I'm going to go left to right forcing the fluid out. And that looks good. So as you can see, we kept the plastic inside the glass and this is going to be critical so that when we're moving our glass across our light box, we're not actually shifting the wet mount. If that plastic was overlapping the sides, what's going to happen is when you go to move the glass, you're going to shift your plastic and that's going to introduce bubbles. Now I'm going to take our scrap piece of tissue paper, fold it over, and I'm just going to push the fluid away from the center of our negatives. Now it's okay if small bubbles form on the edge of the negative, we just don't want those bubbles to be on the surface of the negative itself because they will show through in your images. And we're just very gently pushing out those bubbles. We don't want to introduce any scratches. And what we also don't want to do is bring this tissue paper to the edge so that it collects that fluid and then spreading it across. So we just go gently from the middle outwards until we've removed all the bubbles from the surface. And we now have a nice clean mount that we can go ahead and bring this to our light box and start scanning our negatives. Okay, and here's my DSLR scanning setup. What I essentially have is a box that I painted black on the inside and it's just made out of MDF, something I put together quickly. There's a 90 degree steel bracket, which is a perfect 90 degree angle. And I built it so that it would be perfectly 90 degrees to the sides and bottom. These are all parallel sides. And then I put in a Kaiser Slim Light Plano, which is a great uh, pure white light source. And you won't get any pixelation or anything as if you were to use an iPad or a phone. This is a much better light source to use. I've recessed it into a half inch piece of MDF, which frames it all the way around. And then I have the charger going through on the side. And the reason I've recessed it is so that we can put our piece of glass on it and slide it all the way around with any, without any edges that are gonna catch us up. Now, another thing that I've done, which is critical, is that I use a laser aligner to make sure that our uh, lens is parallel to the surface that we'll be shooting on. To illustrate how shallow of a depth of field we're working with, I took the case from my anti-Newton glass and I put it here and you can see as I press down on it, just the slightest millimeter brings us from tack sharp in focus to completely out of focus. This is why it's absolutely critical that we make sure our camera lens is parallel to the film surface. To do that, I use this laser aligner. These are stupid expensive for what they are. Mine came with my enlarger and that's why I have it. You could also just measure from end to end and make sure that you're the same on every side. And there are other alignment tools as well. But the way I use this is I take a glass slide that has some white tape on it. I turn on the laser, point it at the front of the lens, and then I put this slide with the white tape on it in the path of the laser. And you can see it reflects it right back on top of that original dot. And if I move it just slightly, you can see it dancing around and it lands right where it's supposed to, right in the center. And that's how I know that I'm exactly parallel to the front of our film. Now what I had to do in order to get this parallel, because I promise you it wasn't when I first built it, is I bought all of these little spacers off of Amazon. They're just copper spacers that are between 100th and 1 10th of a centimeter. And I used them to raise the four corners of this light table underneath so that it, until it was perfectly parallel to the lens. And now every time I pop my camera in there, it's perfectly aligned and I don't have to mess with it. Now for focus, I zoom in on the live view to the maximum magnification and I do manual focus. Once you have the focus set once, you don't need to mess with it. Just make sure it's set to manual and then you're good to go. Now with our negatives on the light box and our cable release on the camera, we can go ahead and start sliding the glass from left to right, top to bottom, shooting multiple rows for each photo. And again, I wanna target three rows in each direction for nine total images on each negative. Now the trigger release is gonna be critical here because you don't wanna introduce any shake. I'm having to do about a one second exposure for each because I've stopped down to F11 to try and give us the most depth of field possible. And I'm going to use this window so looking through the glass on top of our scanner, we could see the back of our live view. I wanna keep, it, I wanna keep increasing my exposure, just making sure that these highlights here don't get clipped. It's obviously okay if the uh, white on the edges gets clipped because that's the light box. And then I'm going to move from left to right 
in between the images, scanning in multiple rows. And again, I'm gonna target three images left to right and then three images top to bottom to give us nine images per negative. So I'll go ahead and do that. Something that I forgot to mention is you want to make sure that you have the lens hood attached. We want to minimize any glare that could be coming into the lens from the light box. Now some people will use a black mask to do this. I haven't found this necessary because we're using a black box and the lens hood and that seems to be enough for me to remove all glare. The other key in the technique is to try and minimize the amount that I'm curving as I'm going from left to right. Once you lose sight of those borders it gets difficult and the way I do this is I try and pick a point in the previous image and keep it on the grid moving left to right and that keeps me from waving too much. Here's one of our sets of negatives that we captured and in total it ended up being 15 images and there's no rhyme or reason for that. That's just how I felt comfortable overlapping them. And all we have to do is right click, photo merge, panorama. Here is our merged photo and we have nice straight edges and everything looks good. This is the last one that I did and I got very sloppy. You can see there's an air bubble here and then as we zoom in, there's this effing long fiber <laughs> going all the way across, which is infuriating. But these are all things I could fix in post. So we just go ahead and hit merge and we're all set. And that brings us right back to where we started. After I've applied some basic sharpening, you can see that this just looks incredible. It's also kind of creepy, but <laughs> the level of detail that we have in the center of this flower is just truly incredible. Again, this would be about a 60 inch by 60 inch print. I would never print this that large. You can actually see the reflection of the ring light in some of this. Um, I don't even know what <laughs> I don't even know what this is, but you can see all the little reflections of the ring light at the center of the flower. And I'm not sure if this is water or nectar or what we're looking at, but the detail is just amazing. Um, so although this process is tedious, it's painful, it's infuriating. The results just speak for themselves. I mean. This just looks absolutely amazing. I did not pick the best negative to, to use this process. I have other negatives that obviously have a lot more detail, landscapes and those types of things. But because we're doing this series, I really wanted to focus on this image just so that you can see what goes into creating these types of images. But I hope you've enjoyed this and come back next weekend so that we could take this negative and fix the colors and make it look beautiful and ready for print. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images.